Hey guys, so as you can tell again by the title of this video, I've got some updates on the passing of my Connie Corso puppy. And if you didn't see the last video, unfortunately, my iconic also puppy, Mabel, did pass away at just four months old. So like I say, as you can see by the title of this video, we have had a post-mortem examination done. And I want to share with you guys the results of that, as well as some of my kind of future plans for this channel. And a couple of other bits I want to discuss, like, am I thinking about getting another puppy straight away? And a few questions that you guys have asked. Now, before I do dive into all of that, the first thing I want to say is a massive, genuine, in thank you to everybody that has left really nice comments um, or the lovely comments we had on the YouTube video or the DMs and messages on Instagram or the emails I was in a really bad place obviously when I filmed that video um, and I didn't get to respond to many there was over a thousand actually just in the first 24 hours after we announced it uh, but I wanted to say that me and my wife we sat and we have read every single one of them and genuinely they meant the world to us I won't lie, YouTube and the internet obviously can be quite a toxic place and I knew I obviously had to let you guys know um, what had happened and I did it in obviously quite a raw and emotional um, way and I kind of had put my armour on a little bit expecting there to be a few negative comments and a few trolls and um, people just kind of using it as an opportunity to not be very nice and honestly there wasn't one, not one bad comment and everyone has been absolutely lovely. I genuinely didn't expect the level of support we got and I had no idea what Mabel meant to so many people, what following her journey meant to so many people and what those videos, um, how helpful they they were, I genuinely didn't know. Me and my wife, like I said, we went through all the messages, we both sobbed our hearts out. She's, um, she's at work now, but she's asked me to say thank you to everybody as well because as massively overwhelming and as emotional as all that was, um, it was beautiful, it's genuine. I don't wanna be that guy on YouTube that's banging on about, I love you guys and you're all so amazing, but it's honestly like restored my faith in humanity, seeing so many people out there kind of rally around our community um, and send all their well wishes and, Honestly, thank you. Genuinely, I'm not just saying it. I really honestly appreciate it. And in the state of mind I was at, I was like, well, that's it. I'm done for YouTube. I don't want to do any more ever again. Um, I'm heartbroken. But seeing so many people devastated by the news as well and so many people asking for me to not stop videos and how much, how helpful those videos have been and how um, they would like me to keep making videos to keep help them on their journey with their dogs has genuinely really re-inspired me. And towards the end of the video, after I've talked about the post-mortem examination, I'll discuss that in a little bit more detail. So it's been a few days now. I've managed to mourn a little bit. I'm over the more emotional side of it and I'm able to see it a little bit more, um, not necessarily clearly, but I'm able to be a little bit more work-based and less emotional about the approach, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna discuss that, but I really wanted to start off and make a real point of saying thank you to everybody, both me and Rachel. We Honestly, we really appreciate every single message we got and we appreciate every single one of you. It's been, um, for what was obviously an awful situation, it has been the most heartwarming, inspiring couple of days of reading all those messages. So again, thank you so much. Right, so the post-mortem examination of Mabel, let's discuss it. So, um, obviously I filmed the video that you all saw the day it happened. Me and Rachel, so we went home, we, we went, we slept, slept terribly, we woke up the next morning and I had a phone call from the vet. Now the vet, my little lovely village family vet referred me to this specialist hospital, the veterinary hospital that had a cardiologist there. Um, and they were really advanced in being able to treat quite severe issues like Mabel clearly had. And he was very open and honest that it was well out of his depth and skill set. So that's why we went over to that veterinary hospital. Um, I won't kind of go into detail again about what happened on the day because I explained that in the last video. 
but the vet called me from the veterinary hospital, said the head cardiologist was in and had looked at the case and asked would it be possible with my consent for them to conduct a autopsy or a post-mortem examination to find out exactly what it is that happened so that them as a team can understand it better and then hopefully be able to help other dogs or puppies in the future. So obviously um, I said of course yes if it'll help in the future, if it'll help other people please please um, please go ahead and do that. So that was another kind of awful wait waiting for them to do that and to give me a phone call and explain the results and again it's um it's horrible but you have those pictures don't you you have those pictures of what they're doing and a little body and stuff um so that kind of dragged all the emotions back up and stuff and I again I had to kind of be logical and be like this is it's for the betterment and it's for the good of the vets and the good of it was a positive thing that they were doing it and ultimately I also did want to know exactly what had happened so I had to sit waited a few hours and she did call me back and the results of the autopsy were that she had something called a PDA I believe it was now I'm not a vet so I'm going to butcher this explanation so I'm, it's got a fancy term and they shorten it down to PDA post deductus arteriolosis or something you can google it if you want to know more information but basically it's um, some kind of valve in the heart and it's a hereditary heart issue that can affect dogs um, and it's a valve in the heart that basically means that the two types of blood can mix and it also makes the heart expand a lot so she would have had it since she was born but her body was compensating and she was fighting it and she was managing to maintain it and the problem is that it's almost it's only really possible to treat if you catch it before heart failure um, but unfortunately it's also almost impossible to diagnose before it gets to that point people only really know they're happening it it's happened like in the situation we found ourselves in when it was too late um but yeah, they cut her open. They found that she had this PDA valve that meant the two types of blood were mixing in her heart and it wasn't bringing the deoxygenated blood separate from the oxygenated blood. Um, her heart had grown much bigger than it should be and then blood was mixing and it was trying to pump blood that wasn't oxygenated out to the rest of her body. Again, I'm sorry to if there's any vets watching and again, if you want more information you're gonna have to go and research it yourself but that's kind of the overview of it and so her heart basically wasn't working properly it had got so big um that eventually it got to the point where she then went into heart failure and had the heart attacks that we discussed so so that's what happened so she had the heart attack in the morning her heart then continued to fail um i did have footage of her why her heart was failing because again at the time i'd started filming a video i'd just um launched my new boot camp course and i was filming a video to kind of announce the launch of the course and i was going to do some heel work and some recall work and in the video i'm like i'm, I'm a bit worried she seems to not quite be herself and I'm still debating whether to do a video and show you that clip and obviously I don't want to milk that footage at all but I think it might be useful so genuinely it's some feedback I'd appreciate it might be useful for people to know kind of the signs to look for but basically a head was low and outstretched which is a sign of their body trying to get more oxygen in her little lungs were working really fast so I just thought it was a tummy spasm in because I've seen loads of dogs be sick before and they tend to do almost like that <coughs> that like furball thing in their tummy I just thought it was that and she just had a poorly tummy which is why I filmed it obviously I'd never have dreamt about filming it if I'd have known what it was and then also you can check your dog's gums and that was the really worrying sign for my kind of uh, local village vet they should be like bubblegum pink red and they were like grey white just because there was no oxygen getting around a little body so um so yeah so that was the she called me back she explained all that to me again i can't fault them enough alfreton veterinary hospital based in derbyshire here in the midlands if anybody's around in this area i can't rate them highly enough um might be well worth you writing that down and making a note of it because they are suit they were superb absolutely brilliant but um at the time the day where she passed away she called me and i had to make the decision i was an emotional wreck so i couldn't really talk to her much 
when she, when I spoke to her after the autopsy and she was explaining it, I was in a better place like I am now so that I could talk a bit better. As awful it is, as it is, I was able to process things so I wasn't as emotional wreck as I was. But I asked her, would she have been suffering? And she was like, well, she was a very poorly dog, but she wouldn't have been in like excruciating pain. She said that she would have just felt really out of breath and uncomfortable. Um, but she said even after she'd had a second big heart failure episode with the heart attack and they'd made the decision to put her down um, and I had to make the decision whether to fill her full of drugs to keep her alive for the hour it would have taken me to get there or just to let her slip away and to be euthanized there and then and obviously I told you I made the awful decision that I couldn't be with her but she said those three people with her and even at the end she was um, wagging her tail and trying to give the nurses and the vet licks and kisses why she slipped away so um, beautiful Mabel it was exactly what I would have expected from her. So I promised I wasn't gonna get upset on this video, so I'm gonna cut here, sort myself out, and then we'll carry on talking. Right, yeah, no tears today. We're gonna get through this one, no problem. So yeah. Um, beautiful dog she had a beautiful short very short life but she was doing fantastically like i say i had so much planned i had so much to show you guys um and yeah so i want to answer a couple of the big questions i've been getting um it's kind of three really one of them was kind of about the breeder um and me have i let them know am i upset with them things are along those lines first of all i'm not upset with the breeder whatsoever i have spoke to them to let them know because unfortunately it can be a, a hereditary issue and it is something that the other litter mates should be aware of um but it's not their fault. It's nothing you can check for to find out. It is something that a dog like a mo the mother could have and then live with, but to even find it out, they have to open the heart up and have a look. So um, there's no kind of tests or anything you can do. It's just really, really unfortunate. Like I say, I went out of my way to find the best breeder I could and to find the best puppy I could. Uh, I explained that process over on the canine show. Um, will I be getting another puppy? Yes, um, definitely not for a while. I'm we're far from a um we're not a wealthy family i made it very obvious um she was an expensive puppy like i say we'd saved up for a long time uh, and went out of way to get the best puppy possible because i wanted to have the best temperament possible around my children um so it's going to take a while for us to not only be in a place kind of mentally where we'd be ready to start all that over again but we're gonna have to save up a little bit as well which kind of is a good thing because it gives us the time to kind of heal and get ready it took me oh, like three or four years to be ready after my bull mastiff passed away to bring another mastiff guardian breed in so it might be a little while but 100 percent we will in the future at some point get another mastiff puppy probably a connie corso um, and this channel will remain and it will stay named will and mabel kind of in her memory and in her honor um, and we will go through the process again from day one and I will carry on sharing that with you guys from day one about uh, raising and how you do it and me following my perfect puppy protocols and my boot camp protocols um, that are the two protocols that I use for the vast majority of the behaviorist work that I do and then obviously being able to answer any of your questions um, so that kind of answers the two questions about the breeder they did nothing wrong and I've got no not upset with them whatsoever um yes we are going to get a new puppy but it will take a while for us to be ready and to save up and be in kind of a financial position to do so and um thirdly the future of this channel so like i say it is going to stay it's going to carry on being called will and mabel and it's going to carry on when we get a new puppy exactly how it was now in that meantime i definitely having seen all the beautiful messages i had from so many people 100 percent, i'm going to keep this channel running um there's a couple of videos that i've kind of got that i want to discuss that kind of about mabel and again um i want to finish this boot camp month with my labrador sully and i want to show you you guys and help you guys along with the process um obviously i'm in no mood to do any kind of sales pitch but if in the meantime you are needing kind of my help with your puppies that you're why it's just hit me and hit me as i said that 
seen so many comments about so many people that had got a puppy around the same time and you've so at home there's hundreds of four five six month old puppies just and know how frustrating they can be. I was very open about it, but if you could do anything from watching this video, it'd be take a minute just to give them a cuddle and a love, because, um, yeah, these things can happen. And it went from one day fine to the next day gone. So cherish all those moments, even the frustrating ones. I'd give anything to have a back driving me mad, weeing in the house and chewing up our expensive stuff. Um, yeah, I do already really miss her, so cherish your dogs that you've got at home. But if you do need my help, like I say, fenridogtraining.com, that's got my boot camp on there, it's got my perfect puppy course, so why we kind of process what's happening, that's the place to go for for help. Um, I think I would like kind of your opinions on what I'm going to do on this channel, so if you didn't know and you only follow this channel, I've got another channel called The Canine Show that's more dedicated around choosing the right breed to fit your lifestyle, so that's going to carry on exactly as it was um there's no change there here on will and mabel i want to keep going i want to keep helping the community that have rallied around me and have asked me to keep helping them and i definitely want to do that um things like the q a series that i was starting to implement into the videos anyway so there's been a lot of people asking for help around puppy biting there's been a lot of people asking for help around resource guarding so i'm going to do videos on those things um i'll do videos on other q a so if you keep asking me your questions i'll keep answering them here on this channel there's a few bits from mabel's heel work and her recall work and the work we'd started doing on uh, guarding so for her bark alert and place routine i'm going to do videos on that it'll be hard to kind of look at all that footage but bless her um but i do want to share that with you um and then i've kind of had another idea that if you live in england uh, ideally in the Midlands and you've got a puppy and there's anything that you're struggling with whatsoever especially Mastiff Connie Corso puppies um, and you would like my help and you would be okay with me coming round and doing some work absolutely free of charge but if I could bring the camera and film it so that I can kind of carry on doing what I was doing with Mabel with your guys's puppies and then being able to film it so that other people can watch and learn and follow along so if you um, would like that and you would be happy for me to come and film and you'd like my help um and you'd be willing for me to film it so that i can share it with this beautiful community that we've got i am going to leave my email address down in the description box below so um put it uh, just drop me an email like i say i'll um i get a lot but i will go through them all and if there's people that i can get to in a reasonable distance in the country um I definitely will help and even if you're not in this country if you're in Europe or even over in America I did have some plans for doing a bit of a road trip with Mabel um, and I still do like traveling so maybe there could be something where we could tie that in um, and I could do a little tour and stop off at places there's, there's lots of options so um, if that's something you'd be interested in please let me know and as well as that if you've got any other ideas in general what you'd like this channel to kind of become now like i said i'm going to keep it called will and mabel i want it to kind of keep her memory alive as if it was keep this growing this community like we have started off the back of her so i, I don't want to just let it wither away and turn into nothing and it'd be a waste of time um, i want to make it thrive uh, make it grow and help people because that's why i started this journey in the first place i moved kind of away from in-person work online so that i could reach a bigger audience so that i could meet my dream of people choosing the right breed for them training them to be perfect canine companions to then reduce the amount of dogs and shelters and put down um, needlessly put down anyway so um i want to keep moving towards that i want to keep pushing for that goal so i think that's everything i wanted to cover um because things are still quite raw and emotional just thinking about i thought this video would be easier to film than it is whenever i start talking about it or really thinking about it it sets me off again so um I know I've rambled, I know this was a long video, this is kind of more for the core audience, those beautiful people that sent us all those lovely messages, this video is um, is for you, it's to thank you, um, like I say, the help's where it is online if you need it, in the meantime, if you would like me to come and help you, please, again, the email will be in the description box below, so you can use that, I think I've discussed everything I wanted to discuss, um, again thank you so much it's all me and rachel can both say is thank you so much uh 
Yeah, you guys are amazing. This community is brilliant and I want to keep it going and thriving in memory of Mabel. So I will 100% see you soon on the next episode of Will and Mabel.